on fall recovery. Fall recovery. Um, how many here, show of hands, have already seen one of our texts or one of our staff demonstrated to you? Yes. Okay, great. So now, as an extension of that, so others have not seen it. So this will be a great opportunity for us. But basically, the idea today, the talk today, is on bones. So we talk about fall recovery. Now I just want to kind of teach you a little bit about bones. Particularly, we're going to talk about osteoporosis and osteopenia. It's important for you to understand because the doctors will throw that. Um, and osteoporosis really is a silent bone disease. And most people do not know it until they actually break the bone after a fracture. So it really is a silent disease. Now, uh, what happens is, I wonder if we have that uh, bone model, remember, with the force. So what happens with, uh, as we age, and notice I'm gonna rely on age factor as a primary indicator on who is at risk for bone loss. So osteoporosis is really bone loss that needs to be followed. Um, what happens is that we're gonna find hopefully the bone model, but what happens with the bone loss is that as we age, we're gonna talk about the differences in men and women because of the gender effect. But as we age, the inside of the bone that used to be pores they become thinner inside. And then even the outside skirt of the bone itself gets thin. And this is because of age. Now, for example, in women, uh, let me give you overall, at the age of 30, believe it or not, we start having bone loss already. Now in women, around 50, 55 is when the rapid change because of the hormone levels in women compared to men. So the more you, as you age, then you're already losing bone as we know. But as we age also, we can still make bone. That's the important key, even though as we're losing, but it faster, we can still form bone. It's important for us to do. Oh, it's too bad. We don't have the one where it's a cut over of the bone. No, no. Question so far, by the way, this is a very informal talk. Yes, yes ma'am. My uh, pulmonary doctor says also that uh, you get more bone loss when you have lung issues and with the medicine. Very nice. Thank you. <laughs> what a nice, we didn't plan that. That's a nice segue. Basically, what she's getting at. What the question was, the doctor, the pulmonary doctor, says that the medications that are being used to treat and stabilize your lung condition really unfortunately does lead to additional effect or additional factor in addition to your gender and your age. Very, very nice. So let's go over some risk factors first and then we'll go, go back to that. This way everyone knows. So we're already saying, unfortunately, uh, man also has disease, this disease. Asian and white women are highly prone. Asian and white women, it's because of your stature. It's just the way we were built by Mother Nature. Versus the black <coughs> women, it's a different style. But they're still at rest, just to let you know. So quickly, oh, family history of broken bones. Okay, very important. Broken bone after age 50. So if you break your bone after age 50, we need to work up the density of your bone. Surgery to move the, remove the ovaries before their period stop. Because remember, we talked about the hormone effect of the ovaries. Early menopause, not enough calcium and vitamin D. We'll talk about that again. Extended bed rest or physically inactive. Uh, certain medications talk about that. Arthritis and COPD or asthma, what happens is that we provide you glucocorticoids or corticosteroids, you've heard of that, prednisone, right? You've probably heard of that being treated. That unfortunately state uh, does lead to bone loss, but it's needed and indicated to stabilize your lungs. Make sense? So it is very important that then we study bone loss. 
So I always recommend age indicator, think age. In women, 65 and over. So women and age, those are the primary two factors. So in men, 70 and older. It's really, it, so what happens then, um, by the way, osteopenia is the lower or minor version of osteoporosis. It's still bone loss there. And then of course, normal bone compared to the rest of the population. That's how we know what normal uh, values. Can it be tested? Anyone know? Bones? Can you? Yeah. Yes. How? That's a scan, very nice. Or bone density scan. So once again, women age 65, men 70. Why are we concerned? Let me kind of give you some practical experience, so anecdotal experience. Often I will have, let's say, Dr. Wojcik or the lung doctor send me the patient, right? And we're plugging them along with the rehab. And all of a sudden the lady, and I've seen this very often, will just reach over while she's sitting down and she breaks her spine. So that's how fragile this is, because you can imagine the load on this spine. Um, that's really on the severe end, but really the most common cause of breaking the bone is falling. And so now what I'd like to do quickly is change, and Scott will quickly re-demonstrate fall recovery. And we'll tie this all in together again, okay? Scott, do you want to kind of quickly sure. go over this? Yeah. Okay, so now, by the way, before she, uh, uh, this is already our, our aim. To teach you all, we want you to see one, then you're gonna do it in front of our text. Later down the line, not today, but later down the line. We want you to demonstrate on a fall recovery. The reason why I do this is, uh, this is anecdote, okay, practical experience. I walk into the casino and I see this lady, like this, on the floor, and I'm going, lady, are you okay? Yes, but the security guard won't let her get up. Because obviously in the casino policy and so on, and I thought that was wrong. If you feel you are safe, because you know your body, let go ahead and recover in a resting position instead of being laid out flat like that. I want you to be empowered to be able to recover from a fall and teach them to say, I'm okay, I know what I'm doing, I want to sit somewhere else instead of laying down here. Go ahead. I want to say something. You're the first doctor I've heard say, Know your body. I've never heard about that. Well, you do know your body, so yeah. that's why I want, exactly. I want you, you to recover. Yeah. I want you to empower yourself if you do fall. And by the way, one out of four women will break their hip. That's a lot. Okay. Why, the other thing, why am I concerned when they break the hip? Unfortunately, once you so hip fracture and hip fracture. Right? You can imagine when you break their bones, particularly when you fall on your side. See the, uh, this one here? Joe Skelton's bone. And then also the spine. These get broken. You can imagine. So unfortunately, once in men, the mortality rate after a hip fracture is high. It's very, very interesting. They die right away, fast, unfortunately. So that's why I work, I'm concerned. So normally when I see the patients, they break a fracture, I mean they have a fracture, and all of a sudden I don't see them for another three months. You can imagine how hard for me it is to help them recover. So the minute you uh, fracture, by the way, after it's repaired, you gotta get up the next day. Even when, by the way, also, once you're hospitalized for a, uh, let's say, lung condition, once they know they're stabilized, get out of bed and get into the chair. Sit upright. That's one way to mobilize yourself because you lose muscle strength. Does anyone know how much muscle strength you lose per day of bed rest? One to three percent. Oh gosh. You know how hard it is for you guys to yes. exercise here. One to three percent muscle loss per day of bed rest. That's a lot. You can't afford that. Anyway, okay, so hopefully now the co concept is you're gonna see one. Later, as we progress, we're gonna get the text for you to demonstrate that. 
And then later down the line, we want you to teach your family on how to do it. Because they'll be pleased to know that you are proactive. Family members are always concerned about their elderly parent falling. So when they hear, oh, you're going to teach me, mom, uh, on how to fall and recover? OK. Let's uh, have Scott and James help us out. Thank you, guys. So obviously, prevention is, is the key. We don't want to fall. Um, you know, if we can stay up on our feet and avoid those in instances or those injuries, obviously, that's the key. So that's why we work in here on balance using one foot getting the weight shifted from one side to the other, obviously using the walker, the cane, you know, whatever assistive device that you have, we want to use that. It's not a crutch. We want to use that to prevent the fall. But falls do happen. We've got pets, we've got uneven surfaces, we've got carpet, we've got roads, you know, that stuff does happen, so we can't prevent everything, but if we can prevent it, the key yes, we have the hose from the oxygen. The hoses, that you guys all know it all gets in the way. So the Yep, exactly. So if you can minimize those instances you know go around your house we've got some handouts to look and see you know what are some uh key things that we want to avoid what are things that we want to be aware of um, does anybody know where the most falls happen what room in the in the house bathroom. the bathroom yeah that's wet we're in a hurry we're getting up over the tub whatever it may be so the bathroom is the number one so even just being aware of that when you enter the bathroom this is the worst area for me. This is where I want to be most aware. Now, we want to be aware in the kitchen, out in the community, at the casino, you know, that too. But the bathroom is where most of them happen. So rugs, wet floor, stepping over the shower, take your time, be deliberate about it, even if it seems kind of ridiculous, like, okay, I've got to make sure I'm stable getting up over the tub. We want to prevent that fall first. But if the fall happens, so James is going to be our fall victim, so you can go ahead and lay down on the ground, James. Scott, trip me. Throw him down. Who wants to throw James up? So we've got somebody well, on the James, floor. James is always the victim. Exactly. exactly. Why not? Ask Minji. Yeah. So, so with any fall, we know, you know, hand, wrist, shoulder, you know, those are all keys. But with you all as a demographic, hand, wrist, shoulder and like doctor mentioned the hips too as well so my first thing always is to make sure the patient's okay they're breathing you know they're alert they're awake we don't have a head injury but the first thing is to look through some of those areas you know james can you move your wrist okay so wrists are okay even if we've got some soreness or some pain that's already started to set in wrists are okay can we move the shoulders do we have a fracture at the shoulder shoulders seem to be fine Next thing, can we move the legs and the hips? So James, can you just kind of bend your hips and legs there for me? Perfect. So he can move. Now, we've all seen the guy that comes in, picks the person up, lifts them and puts them on the table. That would be great and ideal, but that's not actually safe, obviously for the person lifting, but it's not safe for the individual too as well. So what we recommend is that if you're on the floor, whether you're on your side, your stomach, on your back, the first thing is to try to get to the side first. Now, before James even does that, an easy way, and we use this a lot with babies in rehab too as well, it's just instinctual, but an easy way, if the hips are okay, we can bring one leg up, one hip up, and use gravity and momentum to get that person over on their side. So whether it's a big individual, an individual with pain, soreness, some limitations, we can still get them onto their side. Now, it may be uncomfortable to lay on the shoulder or the knees, but we would rather kind of go through that episode, get you up, kind of get things moving, than to try you know, some of the alternatives or some of the other ways. So if we can get to the side, now James can kind of keep rolling over to his stomach. And once he's to his stomach, we can either assist him or now he's able to use one, two, three, four points. So he's got both arms, both legs. James, can you lift up onto all fours? So if we can get him on his hands and knees, this is a huge step. Now we can either use somebody else to come in as something to push off of. We can use furniture, a chair, as much as we don't like to walk around and use those things. If we've got something stable that we can assist or use to get over to help not only us, but the victim. So James, can you put one hand up here? So we're just gonna kind of keep working our way up. Now, if somebody's got a lot of weakness, we can get here, use good proper lifting mechanics get up underneath him and James what I'm going to have you do is try to lift this leg up here so if we can get one foot on the ground now you're going to push through this leg and this arm and we're going to lift up at the same time now I know that looks easy 
but that's kind of the proper process and of course we can use assistance another individual recruit people around pick up the phone obviously we've all kind of heard the firemen coming over you know if that's what it takes that's what it takes but if we can assist and get james up on his feet now we can assess better you know are there any injuries do we have any cuts or abrasions is it time to go to the emergency room you know what else do we need to check after that but those are easy ways to not only protect the, the person that has fallen, but you as well. A lot of you guys are, are a care provider for somebody else or for yourself. If you get injured, then they're also in trouble too as well. But like Dr. Missiano had said, broken hips, it's kind of a steep downturn if we don't get you up, get you moving, because laying in the bed, we start to lose our appetite, we lose our energy, we lose our muscle mass, we lose our bone density, and it's just kind of a slippery slope. So that's why we want to get you up on your feet, get you moving. That's why if you've been in the hospital, every day PT comes in, let's get out of bed, let's get moving. We've got to get that gravity and get that resistance back through the system. So. This is very, very important um, because even when you're at home alone, this is a, we want you to know this then so that you can recover yourself potentially. Um, also, that reminds us, you know, it's important for us to, we recommend that you carry the phone around with you as much as you can, particularly when you're alone and then you're on the wall. This way you can recover into the chair and then make your call. We also, I like to recommend the whole concept of the 24-7 uh, services. Uh, one brand, of course they're branded, but those I recommend, the, the ones where you, you carry and it you essentially, it's like a button or like that. I, I, I don't like to mention names because I don't know brand names, but I like the concept of that for you. It basically, basically, it's wireless. Uh, can you give us a little bit more info? Even for me, I would like to, just what is it basically? Uh, so you got to get the deck, that deck set. Once you fracture a bone at your age, I tend to treat that patient with those bone forming uh, medication because the benefit outweighs the risk. The, the other risk that you're talking about, the jaw, the patient's got concern, the jaw fracture, uh, rotten teeth, whatever, 1%, less than 1% of all. So the benefits outweigh the risk. Because once we treat you with calcium, vitamin D, and those bone forming medication, your fracture risk decreases because it strengthens the bone. Makes sense? Plus, of course, what we're doing here, I just want to emphasize what we're doing here, namely two exercises that we're doing here that helps strengthen bone. What is this? Weight bearing. Weight bearing, so walking, balance, the stairs, weight bearing, because gravity, professor will know this, but gravity, due to the uh, physics forces on the bones, the, the gravity pulls weight on the bone to, to strengthen it. And the, the other one is? Lifting weights. Strengthening the exercises, because the muscles tug on that bone when you are, so it really strengthens the bone. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Can I give you an example of how bad osteoporosis can be? Please, I'm glad we share these stories. My mother mm. broke her hip when she was 60. Mm -hmm. By the time she was 80, she went from six foot tall mm. to as tall as I am, five foot two, all on mm. her vertebrae. So Bro, you can imagine her vertebrae. She was in severe pain always. She used narcotics every day. But if we can try to build up the bone, right? Yes. Get you to uh, exercise more, then your fracture recurrence will decrease. That's what the studies show. Do you understand? So the benefits outweigh the risk. Okay. Yes. So if you have the bone density test and you as a doctor look at it, how do you figure out the results from whatever you see on the test? So uh, without going into the deep details, it's what they call a T-score, 
basically how yours fall in within about two and a half deviations from the standard normal population. So you're way up there, 2.5 standard deviations away from the normal population. That's how we determine what the cutoff is. So we have a criteria, negative 2.5 deviations or 1.5 deviation away from the normal. And where does it show it on the scan? Hips? Oh, no, very good. We, we normally study the, the hip and the lumbar, but I always like to look at the hip data first because of the degenerative changes in here. I'd rather see how thick this bone is and it doesn't have any uh, distortion of the image you know, because of the degeneration here, sometimes the image gets distorted. So I'd like to just know how thick this is. That's what I follow. Very good, thank you. Calcium and vitamin D. How much calcium? Thousand milligrams. Huh? We we want at least twelve hundred milligrams of calcium in divided doses. So four hundred, four hundred, four hundred, maybe twelve hundred. Vitamin D. How much minimum? 800 international units. So most of the little ones you see might be 200, some are four, but at least 800. Vitamin D? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So 800 vitamin D and 1200 calcium. Correct. And then weight bearing. And then lifting. Do the vitamins and minerals affect us any other way? Uh, uh, we know that the ones. Side effects. Yes, basically. You say it's at the price of, because I take two. Oh, yeah, I was doing it. You say I should cut it. Oh, yeah, different, uh, because of the absorption. Oh, it's better absorbed when, uh, instead of all in one. Oh, okay. And the vitamin D, I should cut it too? Yes. 400 and 400. Or you can just take one. One one eight hundred IU or just one a day. Yes, vitamin D. Thank you all very much. And then please suggest to us, our staff, what other topics you'd like to hear. But we're gonna all be doing this because we want you all to be empowered and educated. Not uh, as far as bone effect, basically. Thank you again, everyone. Enjoy some food. Thank you. Thank you.